Hello, my name is Aideen and welcome to Hopalong Studio. In today's video, I want to share with you how you can use leaves as a really great texture for your jelly prints. And so when you're looking for leaves in your garden, uh, I usually look for ones that have really delicate leaf types or more broad leaf types and anything that has really interesting veins. I have about 10 different varieties of leaves that I have pulled from my garden. If you don't have your own garden, check out natural areas like parks and other places where you can get a variety of leaves. Just be very careful not to damage the plants when you're pulling a few leaves and just don't take all the leaves off of a plant. Just take a few here and there and that's a lot of stuff for jelly printing. And you want to use them probably the same day that you pick them up. They can start to curl and sometimes you won't be getting as nice of a print. First thing you want to do is just add your paint onto the surface. And now you want to take, I'm going to start with a fern. A fern's a really nice shape because it has lots of fun details. And you just want to press that firmly down. What you will find is that the first time you jelly print with a lot of these leaves, they're going to try to resist being put down on the paper. they haven't really flattened out. You could really use pressed leaves for this, but what you'll notice is you're not going to get the great veins and some of the really neat marks that you can get from using live plant material. A few spots where you can see where I touched, I'm just going to bring my brayer over top of it. So we're just going to take a print with the fern on the page. And this is where I sometimes come in with my bigger brayer, and that just helps me get a nice print. You can see that I've ended up with a really nice fern print. And now that I've taken the fern off, now you have another print that you can take off the surface. That one's really cool too because you have all that fun texture that you get from the leaf. So now I've added a little bit more paint to my surface. And I'm going to go in with some ray flower leaves. These ones get much bigger so I had to choose ones that were a little bit on the smaller side. You just want to make sure you try to press them nicely onto the surface. And because these leaves take up so much of the surface, it's really great to use them with a print that you've already done. So for example, this one came out fairly plain. So I'm going to add it on top. So now that we have those really big areas that are fairly flat, this is going to work a little bit better because it's going to add to this print. And instead of having a bunch of white spaces, if white spaces aren't really your jam and it's not really working for you, this is a way that you can use these first prints to embellish prints you've already created. So you can see there, that has now become a lot more interesting print. And I could even add another print on top for a, another layer. So this is where you can use your more boring-ish prints and making them into something really special. And because I have a lot of paint on there, this is where I often use my back sheet. And I will just stamp it onto my back sheet. And this will eventually become collage paper. It's a way of just pulling the paint off of the leaves but this also gives you a place where you can end up adding other texture and not wasting your paint and it also keeps your surface a little bit cleaner. Just taking another print. You can see with this one it's pulled up a bunch of the color underneath as well as giving you a bit of that print but it's a little bit less clear so I wanted to show you a different way you can also go about adding these layers and adding these prints. So I'm going to add some turquoise, some purple, Maybe even a little bit of pink to the surface. This Quinn Rose I picked up yesterday and I really like it so far. It's not your conventional color for doing leafy natural things, but I like mixing things up a little bit. So now I'm going to go with some Goat's Beard. And I love these ones because they're nice and wide. They come across your print. They have that great leafy shape. I love the texture you can get from these. This one ended up being a little bit more crinkly than I planned on. Certain leaves will dry out and get crinkly faster than others. So make sure that you only pull these right before you're going to start doing your jelly printing. You'll find that you'll get much better results. And so with these ones, they're sticking up a little bit and you may not like that look. And so sometimes what I like to do is come across them like this. And I kind of catch the high points 
and it is going to change a bit of your background. So just be aware of that. You'll notice that there's different marks going on. Basically, I'm just pulling some of the background color onto the leaves themselves. And you'll always find that for the first bit, some of those stems are going to want to stick up. And so I'm going to take another print. Make sure you rub nice and hard on this one. Make sure you get all of those spaces in between the leaves. That's probably the biggest thing is you want to make sure that you do get those spaces between the leaves. It's a very uneven, more bumpy technique, so you just need to adjust for it. And sometimes your leaves will actually stick to your page. But what you'll notice is that because I've added a little bit of paint on top, the paint showed all that fun texture as well as providing that really strong background as well. So that's another way of adding a bit more texture from just blocking out areas completely. I generally use my hand for taking prints, but I do use my brayer occasionally if I feel like I'm having trouble getting enough pressure on the page. And yeah, just the way that pulled up because of the way I added the brayer, now I'm getting a much more strong print with these different textures. And so when you just want to add a little bit of pressed in texture and you don't want to do too crazy with having big blank spots, this is going to be a lot more subtle. It's not going to show as much as crazy design as with some of the other ones. And with this one, I like going on a little bit thinner with my paint. I feel like it goes a little bit better when you're trying to get a lot of those really subtle textures, especially when you're only pressing in and you're taking off. And if you really want that particular texture to show up really well, you may want to clean your plate. It's another way that you can make sure that you get just the layers that you want of color. So I have some of this Artemisa, also known as Silver Mound. And to make sure I get nice, strong prints, I'm just brewing along the surface. of in this case I'm just using copy paper for this one just over top and by using a thin layer of paint and by using the brayer to really push that into the surface and pull off the paint you get a lot more of that white. I'm going to do a few more prints here. This is with Lemony Lace Elderberry which is a very nice plant that I have in my yard. It's a bush. It's grown about double the size that the tag said it would, but it's beautiful. It has really nice lacy leaves, which is perfect for jelly printing. And this is when I'm just going to add a little bit of that brayer motion on top, see what I end up getting. And I love some of that fun texture that you can kind of get. And you can see some areas here that I left very white just because I wasn't able to press too hard. But that's okay. I actually find that the mixed media paper, because it's a little bit tougher, works a bit better for printing with leaves. It doesn't stick as much. And because of the fact that it's not going to damage your leaves as much, it's a nice way of being able to get a few more pulls out of your plants. And that one came out really quite nice. Um, really interesting, lots of texture. I'm definitely going to use that on a page. And then I'm going to try something different. I'm going to use some pasta leaves. And you'll notice these ones have very textured margins, and that's a particular variety that I do have in my garden. Pasta leaves don't work quite as well, just because you'll notice they do tend to buckle up. In this case, I'm just going to brayer them over and then pull them up. Not usually the technique that I use, but in this case with these leaves, they're just not working quite as well as I would like. Actually, this one is, so I'm going to leave that one on. Let's see if I can get this guy to stay. Ah, yeah, this one's staying as well. I think I just had it in the wrong direction. So I'm going to add another one, and we're going to add it like so. We're going to see what this looks like. In this case, I'm going to use a print that doesn't have a lot going on with it, and we're going to see what this turns out like. And sometimes some of these areas where you end up having a lot of white space, it's nice to have these other prints that you can work with. So that makes for a very different print. And because of those green areas that already had color, now you have a few different things going on. And that's pulled up some of the color underneath as well. So you get some of those pink areas that also come through. So to recap a bit, you can see that basically there's a lot of different ways you can go about this. You could also mix this with stencils and stamps and other things as well. You don't necessarily have to stick with just leaves the way I have. I, this whole video, the point was to do leaves. And so I really wanted to show you some of the different effects that you can get. It's just a combination of figuring out which 
types of textures you like, whether or not you want to leave them as just big blank spots, if you want to add the brayer over top, or if you want to do something else entirely. And I do like the big spots, but I do like adding the brayer over top because I think it does add a little bit of something to the design. And you don't have to add a lot just to get some of that fun texture that kind of shows on those leaves. Because I think it's fun to be able to see all those veins. I feel like that's half the reason you would want to use plants over other things. And then with this, you can also bring in some of your texture tools. You could bring in lines across it as well. And so that's another way you can just continue to add layers and layers, either individual layers or in this case, like what I'm doing here, and you never know what you'll end up with. And so I'm just using regular copy paper this time. As you can see, it's sucking into the surface a little bit more. So you gotta work it a little bit more to get the transference of image. This one takes a little bit more work because again, the moment you leave a lot of these bumpy things on the surface, it's gonna change how the textures will work on the print. That's pretty fun. So the key to a lot of this stuff is just figuring out which way you want the leaves to lay, how you want to try to add those layers, uh, not putting your jelly plate because you're getting some really interesting final effects from it. But there you go, that's just another print. So I hope this is giving you some ideas on how you can use jelly printing in your projects. It's giving you ways that you can incorporate leaves. I've touched on a lot of leaves today. I didn't even t use everything that I have in my collection, but I just wanted to show you just a few different ways you can add these textures and just really add variety to your jelly prints. So if you've enjoyed this video, if you could like it, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. I also include the full supply list below, which shows you the types of paints that I've used. If you want to see the full range of colors, check out the article on my website that shows you every paint that I've used for this project. So I hope you have a really great week, that you take some time for some personal self-care, and I will see you next time.